Hey, this is Takashi from Gumboot Games NZ. Uh, just turning in here with a little update on the development of floating floors. So, as you can kind of see here, it's a bit of an odd camera angle. Just try and zoom out a little bit manually. Um, but here, I've actually got a what we call a, a sample box from a game manufacturer called Gameland that um, I am currently exploring options with in terms of uh, manufacturing the the first copy of the game so this is pretty exciting I haven't actually opened up the box to, to take a look inside so you really are seeing a box opening here um, and yeah you're going to get a first-hand look at some of the quality that Gameland has on offer uh, so just kind of flipping the box around a little bit uh, you've probably noticed that there's a couple of stickers on there uh, reason being is uh, been having some conversation with Gameland around uh, potential options in terms of uh, premium finish options. So there's a little sneak peek there for those tuning in today. All right, so um, let's dig into it. You can probably see right off the get-go, uh, let's see, well, at least here, there's a bit of a sheen. You can kind of see my reflection there. Um, whereas this part is like a matte finish. So that would be what we call, uh, consider surface matte um, with a spot UV. So where part of it has a nice little shine to it to make, to make it really stand out. Another shiny little thing on this box is the silver stamping that the Gameland logo is in on the sides of the box. And if we flip it around here, we'll see what that looks like in a slightly finer font. So yeah, um, that's a pretty neat finish that's giving me some ideas. Now, if we flip over the box here, we've got, I suppose, the contents that we can expect in this sample box, but supposedly also a game for a game designer. Um, we've got the components list. Uh, this is all just a matte finish. Um, I guess we've got an indication of what the bar barcode might look like in the corner there, um, along with these symbols here, and some details. So that is a pretty good indication of what a game might look like if it were manufactured through Gameland. I'm just gonna set that off to the side and we're gonna crack this open. All right, so a crucial part of the, the components or components list is the rule book here. And that's feeling really good. Um, it's it's got, a nice, uh, got a nice weight to the pages. But from what I gather, they also try to use recyclable materials as much as possible for sustainable manufacturing practices. So when I've got a moment, I'll dig into this rule book for this game that they have created. But as you can see here, it's also giving us a really good indication of what uh, some of the options are in terms of their manufacturing and their practices around that. So that's a really cool idea. Um, just in, a, in comparison, this is what we have so far. So this is just a, um, a standard, uh, I guess, print of like on standard on standard printing paper um, at a local print shop for the latest edition of the Floating Floors rule book. There will be some minor modifications to um, the artwork, graphics, and design in the final copy that you see in your Kickstarter pledges, Kickstarter rewards. Um, but yeah, here's the comparison of what that looks like. So these pages, they've, they've, they're slightly, it's hard to describe, but they're slightly lighter in weight in comparison to, to these. All right, we'll set those aside. And here we've got 250 gram, uh, one millimeter gray board, and it's a glossy varnish surface with a linen finish. So I can definitely feel that linen finish right there. Um, now, I'm pretty excited to see this punch board here because in some recent conversations I have been having with Gameland and other manufacturers, we currently have these as prototypes. Um, they're like a, a gloss finish. I've also tried a linen finish uh, with a one with uh, single copy prototypes. 
And while these have been fun to play with and they give us a really good idea of how the components work together, uh, there, there is a little bit of a, a slipperiness to them, uh, which ups the dexterity, um, but I am also looking to make this as accessible as possible. So for those that are wanting to get a good grasp of the Floating Floors experience, these will do. Um, they're a nice firm card that um, uh, we'll probably be using maybe white and blue core, potentially, black core. Um, and that is kind of the, the entry level that we're looking at for, for a copy of Floating Floors. And this may be a premium option, stay tuned. But I'm just gonna punch this out. Oh, I love this part, as long as it goes well. <laughs> I see. All right, well, I'm gonna punch out a slightly easier part. Uh, here we go. Something that isn't stuck down. All right. And in comparison to the thickness of what we're seeing with our prototype at the moment, that is, it's a bit blurry, but that is one millimeter too. So the difference here is that this has a linen finish. This is a slightly glossy finish. So that is going to be fun to play with. I'm gonna enjoy seeing what it's like balancing the different components, the, the jutsu or the tokens on the top of the terrain. Um, yeah, just with this new kind of more weighted feel to it. Here we've got some more punch board tokens. And this is giving me some really cool ideas for what we can do with potential multi-layering. Ah, there we go. And this is a really neat example of what a recessed uh, punch board or player board might look like in some games. Playing around with this idea as well um, for the potentially the earth terrain on these terrain blocks here where you would be putting in the tokens um, along with perhaps the, the floorboards themselves, but we're just gonna have to check for viability there um, in terms of what we can do and how narrow we can get these spaces here. Sweet, and here we go. So that is the yeah, 1.5 millimeter gray board plus art paper on the back. Again, a linen finish. All right, so here we've got a nice gloss almost like whiteboard that we could probably um, do some temporary scribbling on and then just dry erase off. And this is considered 350 gram art paper with a glossy lamination. All right, here we've got more of the same. Um, this is kind of the faces of the, uh, of the punch board that we were seeing there, same pattern but again, it's a gloss finish. Here we've got a linen finish. Again, it's the same pattern as the punch board earlier with um, the backing to it, making it recessed, uh, but this doesn't have a backing to it. So it's just the same, same linen finish. Sweet, now this is where we're getting into really good stuff. We've got some wooden cubes here. All right, so here, I guess this would be um, more like a 0.8 size in comparison to the, um, sorry, uh, eight millimeter size cube in comparison to the 10, mil 10 millimeter size cubes that we're seeing in the prototype and that are gonna be used um, for another comparison. So this is the, the octoboxes or octagons that came crafter producers. All right, we've got a neat metal coin. Love it. Now again, for um, easier manufacturing practices, we, I haven't gone down the route of using metal pieces yet, um, but this is, this is really neat to see in terms of the, the quality there. I feel like I could go into I don't know, a bank in Harry Potter and find this. <laughs> Here we've got a really neat plastic mini.
And very cool. Uh, looks like screen printed die. All right, some more plastic pieces. And a variety of polyhedral dice and all different shapes and sizes. Got some D4s, D20s. And yes. Check that out. Now, I'm not sure how easy it is to tell in the, with the camera angle here, but this is what they would consider a um, rolled gold paint meeple in comparison to uh, what we're looking at here, which is just a, a green rolled paint. Um, so we're playing around with some ideas for gold as well, which I'm super excited about. That's awesome to see. All right, we've got some more meeples here. Cute little ghost meeple. And some complex shapes with various uh, screen printing, I suppose. Some little plastic people. Uh, this would be, okay, so 250 gram white cards glued. All right, neat. So that's got a nice matte finish to it. Sweet little standy. There we go. And we've got a game board. Now, to make float, uh, floating floors as accessible as possible, I am not actually using a game board this time around. The game board will be made of a combination of terrain tiles. Um, as you have probably seen in earlier videos, if you haven't, please check them out. Or of course, go to floatingfloors.co.nz and you'll get a pretty good idea of what the terrain and the map looks like in floating floors. But this is, this is really neat to see um, in terms of potential future prototypes. So here we go, that's a Surface matte lamination with linen finish, special black paper backing. All right. Now here, I'm not sure. I haven't actually come geared up with scissors, so we'll see how this goes. But yeah, okay. Uh, 350 gram R paper. I'll have to play around with that in a little bit but you can probably get an idea for what that would look like. Uh, let's see if I can grab that. So that'll be, it'll be very similar to this, um, even slightly thinner, maybe more malleable. And then we've got 350 gram art paper, uh, really good for shuffling cards. And that looks like it's got a a matte finish from what I can say, so be keen to check that out. Uh, here we go, some black core, so a slightly higher grade. More rigid, not as malleable. And we've got blue core paper. Sweet, and some playing cards, so um, a plastic playing card and we've got this here as well which is plastic sweet some plastic chips poker style chips <laughs> with some fun screen printing on that and uh, it looks like little yeah little metal tokens have to figure out what those are Look like little um, culinary things, uh, maybe rice bowls or something. <laughs> Could be completely wrong, they could be hats. All right, now this is a, uh, looks like a custom mold of a plastic insert using uh, pet plastic. So good and sturdy. And this is an example of a paper tray using white card. Um, that's not going to deteriorate anytime soon, but still uh, definitely recyclable materials, which is really good to see. 
And yeah, I think, yeah, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna pull that out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's given us a really good idea of the quality that game land does produce. Um, they're just so versatile and the options and uh, what we can what we can get accomplish with floating floors, which is exciting to see. I hope uh, this has you as excited as as I am at the moment, and I look forward to providing future updates on how we track with further prototypes for floating floors. All right. Well, thanks for this unboxing of the Game Land Always Smile uh, sample box that Game Land have kindly provided. Uh, do check them out if you are thinking of creating a custom game um, or for yeah ideas and other games that they have produced which are all top-notch all right thanks for tuning in bye for now